In this short video, I want to share some important updates for our church. I'm going to talk about our leadership structure, uh, our plans for multiplication, and also what we'll be teaching on this fall. Now, as you may know, our vision is to be one church with multiple congregations gathering all over the seacoast. So multiple congregations, but joining together in one mission, which is to know Christ and to make him known. And we do that through proclaiming the gospel, uh, through serving our cities, helping the marginalized and blessing the nations. Now, making our vision a reality is something that we can all play a part in, but it also requires leadership. And what we see in the New Testament is that leadership is a team effort. Over the summer, our leadership team has been meeting to more clearly define our own leadership structure and the various roles and responsibilities. You know, when we had just one congregation, we had what we called the pastoral team overseeing the whole church. But now we have more than one congregation uh, with others planned for the future. And so we knew that that had to change. So let me explain now how we have restructured. We now have a central team that consists of what the Bible calls elders, uh, together with other gifted men and women who provide pastoral and strategic oversight to the whole church and its congregations. Each member of the central team has a specific role and responsibility, and you'll be able to read about what those are on our website. So for example, my role as senior pastor is to lead that team. And I also have a specific responsibility for teaching in the church. But I just wanna highlight a couple of others on the team that will be responsible for something new. And that is uh, Dave and Sue Zeely and Henry and Lissy Cooley. Dave and Sue are gonna be responsible for overseeing and supporting the community group leaders in our Portsmouth congregation. And Henry and Lissy Cooley will be responsible for the community group leaders in our Summersworth congregation. Now, these are new roles in our church and have been much needed for a long time now. Our community group leaders, they play a valuable and vital role in our church family. And uh, since our small groups are now one of the main contexts for teaching people about being disciples of Jesus, you know, the encouragement and the experience that these two outstanding couples bring will really help to build up and strengthen our whole church. But there are two other teams that I wanna mention. Because as well as having a central team over the whole church, we also have teams that serve each congregation. So currently we have a Summersworth team and we have a Portsmouth team. And these are teams of gifted men and women, which include elders and other overseers like the Zeelies and the Coolies. And they have the responsibility of helping to care for the people in their congregation, as well as administrate the gatherings and to implement our vision. Each team has someone appointed to be the team lead. And we've uh, deliberately used that term team lead so that people don't assume that they are the leaders of the congregation. Now it's the team that leads the congregation, but the team leads role is to organize, administrate and lead the team. As you may know, Val Moll plays that role in Summersworth. In Portsmouth, it used to be Alcra and Bev Mayers until they moved to the Netherlands. So moving forward, I'm delighted to announce that Ray Forsey has agreed to fulfill that role. And I know that her gift mix will be perfect at this time for our Portsmouth team. So that's our leadership structure. Now, what about our plan to multiply our congregations? As you may know, you know, we made a decision based on prophetic words that we've received that rather than gathering as many people as we can in the building and holding multiple services, we're wanting to keep our congregations to a certain size of between about 70 and 120. It's a size where people can really know one another, where everyone can play a part and where it's easier for guests to feel welcomed. 
So when our congregations get too big, we just start new congregations in neighboring towns and cities as God leads us. Not only does that enable us to more effectively serve the seacoast, but it also means many more people can grow in leadership, exercise their gifts, and be released in ministry. Now, two places that we've already begun praying for potential new congregations in are Rochester and the UNH campus. In Rochester, we felt to check against trying to start a new congregation too quickly. And our central team felt we got some wisdom from God to start a pre-launch team instead. And this pre-launch team will consist of all those who want to commit to being a part of a new congregation in Rochester. And they'll be gathering on a midweek evening each week through the fall, primarily to pray to pray for Rochester, uh, to pray for their neighbours, uh, to pray for God's wisdom, uh, to pray for doors to open and for men and women of peace and so on. Some of our leaders like Sam and Marlene Poe and Shane and Margaret Ikeda have committed to being part of that. And I will also be involved for a season as we look to establish local leadership. And we'll be praying for that team when we gather in Summersworth on Tuesday, September the 6th. A new pioneering group is also going to start meeting on campus at UNH. That group is going to be led by Adrian and Becca Yancey. And they've gone with a desire to partner with the campus ministries who've been faithfully serving there for years now. The goal will be to see how God might lead us as we serve alongside these ministries and seek to build community. And their first gathering there will be on September the 8th. The third thing I want to share with you is what we're going to be teaching on this fall. And this is something I'm very excited about. As you may know, we've been, we have kind of different kinds of teachings that we can benefit from here at New Frontiers Church. You know, we don't believe that just listening to a Sunday sermon is sufficient for our spiritual formation. Right? Not if we want to live the way of Jesus in a culture that is constantly trying to conform us to its way of thinking. So on Sunday mornings throughout the fall, we'll be looking at some of the miracles and works of Jesus in the gospel stories and in the book of Acts. Jesus said, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing. And so we're going to be encouraging one another to go out and do the works of Jesus among people who may be far from him. We'll also be looking for the leading of his spirit in our Sunday gatherings as we ask him to do his work in our church community, healing hearts, minds and bodies. Then in our community groups, we're going to be watching and discussing a new online series of messages where we'll look at what it means to be a church like the ones we see in the New Testament because we want to be a spirit-empowered church that is a witness to the risen Lord Jesus by the way that we proclaim the gospel, serve our cities, help the marginalized, and bless the nations. And so we're going to be telling some of the stories of different churches in the New Testament to communicate our vision and values, as well as telling some of our own story. And I really hope this series will form a new membership course for people who want to join our church in the future. And finally, as if that wasn't enough, this fall there are a number of classes that we're going to be running on different subjects. And so for five Sunday evenings we're running a divine healing workshop to teach a biblical foundation in healing. That's then going to be followed by six evenings on engaging the culture without losing the gospel. And for those wanting to dive deeper into New Testament theology, we have this semester's trilogy class, which will be on the life and ministry of Paul. And you can find all the information for these on our website. You know, I'm just so grateful for all the teachers that God has gifted us with in our church. So this fall, Let's all please fully engage as we continue in our desire to know Jesus and to make him known.